Hey guys, Eric here, back at Comic Con outside with plenty of fun people behind us. I am here with the crew from one of my very favorite shows, Hannibal. Guys, thanks for coming here with us. Thank you for having us. Nice Let's just let's get the uh, the elephant in the room or the elephant outside the convention center out of the way. What's going on with the future of the show, Brian? Martha? <laughs> well, as you've heard, and, and we just uh, recently heard, no. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of uh, after doing season three. Yeah. We ended on a fantastic note where it could continue on or stay where it is for a pause. Okay. And I think where we're finding the pause is kind of happening. Just due to everybody's schedules, and um, and we need actually we, we need time to develop the next stretch. Mm -hmm. It goes into a uh, a completely new world, and that's what we're excited about. And we're here to actually talk about what we're doing right now, which right. is going into Red Dragon. You're about to go into yeah a big storyline. Uh, we still have it. Well, we're we're wrapping up sort of the uh, the Italy adventure, as it were, for Hannibal. Uh, what can you say though about delving into you know the the book upon which this is all based, Brian, and finally going to the Red Dragon story? Uh, it's it's been a really fascinating experience because we mined it so thoroughly in the first two seasons that we're now able to use dynamics that we created in the show to transform the Red Dragon story so it feels fresh. It's a lot of the stuff. If you're a fan of the Red Dragon series, you're going to get a lot of what you love and. You're also going to get some new dynamics between Will and Hannibal and Francis Dollarhide that you hadn't seen in any previous adaptation, so it's very exciting. And you know, Richard, obviously, you're going to embody this very famous character. Uh, you know, this is a show that obviously Hugh already went through this, Mass went through this, the playing of a character that people have already have identified a couple of great actors with. How do you approach it? Do you just kind of go a clean slate when you go into like this? Yeah, I'd, I'd seen uh, Manhunter years ago, but it wasn't uh, clear in my, in my mind. It was too long ago, and I didn't revisit those films, but I, I certainly... Um, absorbed myself in the book and it, it, it reintroduced me to Thomas Harris's great writing and it made me understand why uh, the series of Hannibal had been so rich because he gives uh, so much detail to each character so that was really my starting point and, and my end point really. And uh, Hugh for your character I mean we're, we're you know about two weeks away from seeing how exactly the dynamics about the shift again uh, but you know in the book Red Dragon obviously uh, Will Graham is in a, a different place maybe than in the show, but still obviously there's a damaged history with Hannibal, that's the basics. So can you talk about uh, what it will be like for Will to now encounter, he's encountered a lot of crazy things, but will Francis be a new level of uh, crazy for him? I, I think so, I think there's something particularly um, terrifying uh, about Dollarhide, although he, he knows him as the Red Dragon, obviously, uh, because of what he represents, which is somebody who maybe reminds him of the worst, most frightening version of himself, Maybe, and also, possibly, he sees as a version of a kind of proto Hannibal who he might be able to save. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of significance to it. Um, but, and what we have, I mean, really, as Brian was saying, is a situation when there's by now in our third season, there's a much richer backstory between me and Hannibal. So that comes into play a lot more too. Uh, Martha, for you, you know, because when this show began, I mean, from the beginning, we knew we would get to Red Dragon. I mean, remember Brian? Well, we didn't know. We didn't know. <laughs> we didn't know. We didn't know. But, uh, you know, knock on wood, we would get to there. Uh, so was it just, did it feel like, you know, this sort of milestone moment that, you know, okay, here we are. We are now reaching, uh, the, the, we're reaching the beginning, as it were, when you got to go into this story? Well, actually, when I first met Brian, we talked about what the, what the show would be, and it was all pre-Red Dragon. Mm -hmm. And I think in going along in every season, the ante is always upped. Episode by episode per season, it just ups one episode. And, and so with the escalation, it was a, um, a slip into the book of Hannibal. So that was incorporated, the, many of the themes, before we get to the Red Dragon. So that's, that's what pretty much the, uh, the natural progression, I think, of what was crafted was, was so, was so um, genius. Thank you, Brian, <laughs> of uh, leading then into now the, the great Red Dragon. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of fun with it. Uh, you know, Brian, you know, this show has uh, had a 
great fun with kind of a, a remixing Hannibal lore, you know, and then taking different aspects and putting them in different ways. So when you go into Red Dragon, because again, it is a story we've seen a couple movies of, you've got certain characters and Freddy Lowndes' involvement and Molly's involvement. Are you having fun sort of subverting, as you often have on the show, using those familiar things that happen, but in maybe ways people don't expect? Absolutely. We've kind of redefined a lot of the character dynamics with the show. Uh, there are incidences that you are familiar with that we're approaching from a completely different angle. Uh, things that in the novel and the previous adaptations that could have happened but didn't happen, we sort of make happen uh, just to give audience members who are as familiar with the, the literature and the previous adaptations as I am uh, a fresh experience because I want it to feel new even though that we're telling a story that's been told a couple of times before. And uh, Richard, you know, the character in the book, which I actually recently reread, um, you know, he's, he's a scary guy, he does awful things, but there is a sympathetic side to him. We obviously get the backstory with him. Uh, for you approaching him, uh, how did you want to sort of to portray him on screen? Because he needs to be terrifying, but you also have to want to see what motivated him. I feel like my my instincts towards him when I read the book were that, were that I, obviously I was looking to empathize with him in an attempt to play him, but I, I felt like if I could get the audience to, to do the same, then then maybe I would have succeeded in in uh, finding that balance because it's when you realize what that character does and, and, and how he does it and why, to, to then empathize with a man that can uh, fall in love is, uh, I don't know, it's quite a tricky thing to, to, to rationalize in, in your mind. Um, but I, I just loved the, that, the, the strangeness of that process and, and uh, working with these guys who really protect the character and, and understand him in that way was, was brilliant. We, uh, we were told quite a while ago, a few months ago, that there'd be a time jump at this point in the show. Hugh, your character, I think I told you before, my wife's always like, I feel so bad for him because he's gone through a lot. Uh, we've heard that this might be, for a little while at least, a happier Will. There's reason to believe that. He has a love interest. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I put the microphone in my mouth. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you see him, um, you know, in, in some ways, uh, 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 jumping back to the very first episode of the first season, he's, he's managed to put some distance between him and... and you know, at that point, it was just the job of being a profiler, and now it's everything, the history with Hannibal. And, you know, for a moment, we see him in this kind of new domestic reality, um, living off in the woods with um, Molly and uh, and their kid, yeah. um, and the dogs. But, but I have to say, it does not last very long. Right, right. It won't last too long. Uh, Martha, you know, this show has uh, reinvented itself a few times. Has that been an exciting aspect for you, that it's not been like, this is the format of Hannibal, and that you can switch it up in this way? I think season one, we started with a format trying to incorporate more procedural. Right. But I think just lending the story and, and what really everyone clamored for was more the bromance between Will Graham and Hannibal, that the progression then obviously uh, was, you know, just happened. Not that it just happened, nothing ever just happens. But um, loving it. I think everybody just loves the way the progression uh, happened and, and with such beauty and class and quality and star actors, all of them. Just, just absolutely. Who would have thought? Here's where I don't know how much you can say, uh, you know, because we we have a clearly defined idea of what Hannibal's role is in Red Dragon. Um, I'm assuming we're going to get a version of that. Uh, you already kind of subverted it in season two by having them on the opposite side of the bars. But is there uh, just a real kind of cool feel when you get to do, I assume, a Will Graham Hannibal classic face-off like that? Uh, yeah, the uh, part of the fun. And the iconography of the characters is getting that face-to-face -face moment for the first time between these two men. And because of the nature of the show and how much we've explored between them, it, it has a, a melancholy effect that you, you, you mourn for the friendship and then you realize it's an impossible one. Right. And, you know, uh, Richard, for you joining the show, this is an extremely visceral show. They do some things visually that uh, are very surprising and, you know, shocking. Uh, what was it like for you to go in and to see on the set that's what the thing's going on? I, um, I stayed away from quite a lot of it. I certainly didn't uh, visit the, the one set which, where um, Will Graham discovers the, the, the murder. I, 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 for some reason, I wanted to keep the, the character compartmentalized so that he never really um, embraced what he 
what he did. But there was one scene where um, it was written that, that Dollarhide uh, dines on something quite despicable, and uh, it, it was shocking to me to, to be asked to do it, and I was quite shocked at myself having <laughs> done it. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing how that, how that ends up. We are looking forward to seeing whatever it is you're referring to. Uh, guys, obviously love Hannibal here. We have our fingers crossed about the future of the show. In the meantime, though, several more episodes Thursday nights, NBC at 10. Tune in for plenty more from Comic-Con. Keep it here at IGN. Thanks for being here, guys. Thank you, Thanks, Thank you so much. Thank you.